we are the leapers. Kind of a funny name for forces of incarnation. Uh, we could have gone for something that sounded much more sophisticated. After all, we did make this name up for ourselves with Kathy and others <clears throat> in the context of how we are known to help, quote, leap people between parallel worlds uh, when it benefits their growth, their fulfillment, and their survival. And their ability to contribute, contribute to the whole uh, wisdom from their own experience on some of the lower parallels or the denser parallels, or that's not even a fair word. Because there are some very evolved dense parallels, but um, the less evolved parallels. Um, uh, we uh, have made this opportunity available to people now. Wanting to do this on a widespread level to lead people to a much more fulfilling parallel world. We have never seen on this planet um, the need before to, quote, leap people between parallel worlds and offer our assistance in this way. This is a very special time on your planet and, a, and my planet, too. Um, uh, sometimes, I, I'll, I'll say up front that um, sometimes uh, we leapers talk in plural, and sometimes we talk in singular. Um, and it's something that if, if you get familiar with some of our other material, You'll see that you really, too, are sometimes plural if you <clears throat> talk about you and your, your many parallel lives. Or if you talk about you and other members of your soul family, you are we. And then sometimes you say me. And actually, sometimes the me could be represent the oversoul if the oversoul is, happens to be talking, which would include you. So if you'll uh, let us just kind of talk back and forth, we or, or I, <clears throat> um, we are, when we say we are the forces of nature that help to bring into being and into incarnation everyone that is born in our particular soul family and everyone who take out of incarnation, everyone who dies from our particular, you know, in, within our particular soul family, um, we, uh, the word we includes both, at times, both that um, entity called the force of, of incarnation. And sometimes it refers to uh, our human helpers who are part of the leapers. And um, Kathy is one of those. And we hope to recruit more of you to be uh, those oh, part of the sleep movement, not only uh, as ones who are the leapies, who are wanting to travel from world to world, but those who help to facilitate those who leap from world to world. Um, whether you're welcoming people into your world from another world and providing um, a host family function for them, helping them get situated, uh, whether you're helping people um, leap within uh, their own culture so that they, you know, often people will be uh, living in the same house, in the same town, with the same family, and they will ask for a huge change in their life. For instance, the um, cessation of an addiction. Um, and if they come to us for that, we will split off, help them split off a new parallel self that doesn't have that addiction. And so they wake up the next day, which, uh, and what may be a major leap. I mean, it, you, you know, people who go through something uh, uh, like that often feel like it is a new world they're in, you know, and and because uh, everything's changed in how people react to them, into the potentials for their life, into just the feeling of freedom to not be 
a chain to an addiction. Just as an example, uh, we were used to a lot of big healings coming from, um, again, splitting off a parallel self, helping you split off a parallel self that is healed in the way that you have asked to be healed. These are leaps within, you know, within a familiar uh, context of the way you've built your life. But one major ingredient has changed then. Or you may want to help us facilitate leaps between parallel worlds where you would be the one to, um, if you're very, you know, advanced in the spiritual realm of essentially being a, a spirit guide to someone else and helping them um, find the appropriate parallel world to which destination to which they are going um, uh, through really very carefully reading that person's energy, interests, desires, goals, and their cosmic higher purpose, um, which is usually within uh, how they are interacting with other members of their soul family in a joint purpose. Um, in that sense, leaping is something that is our takeoff on a very natural process that you all do every day, not every day, but uh, on a, you know, on a mundane level of um, splitting off parallel selves so that um, if you want to explore a new fork in the road of your life, a new goal, a new aspect of yourself, um, then you often will split off a parallel self who looks like you, acts like you, has the same history as you, but is doing something very different than who, what you were doing yesterday um, is doing was doing. It's a very natural process. Now, what we call the leap means there's a little divine, I guess you could call it divine intervention, where we come in and we say, you know, there's a natural flow to how, how much you could really uh, split off a parallel self and accomplish. So we call it a leap if it's a big change, whether it's such a big change that <clears throat> you end up in a different culture altogether. Um, you, you know, within the Earth, um, the Earth's uh, matrix, you might say, are many, many parallel worlds living often in the same geographical location. But they're at slightly different densities, and parallel worlds are built around different meanings. Uh, that affect these densities, uh, the different paradigms of what they are exploring, what they're interested in exploring. The universe is wildly explorative. It, um, that's the, the basic mega paradigm, you might say, of the universe is experience and having rich experience. Um, you all see how a thunderstorm can roll in and it doesn't seem to have a set destination or direction. It um, tends to take into account so many factors of where the rain's going to fall, if there's going to be lightning, um, at least until, uh, you know, before humans started meddling with all that. Now, now it's a question of whether there is really any natural thunderstorm. But in the old days... You would feel a thunderstorm coming, and you would be relating to it. You would be uh, really participating with it. Um, and leaps and parallel split-offs are somewhat um, kind of a natural process, ordinarily, like a thunderstorm. Uh, so you get certain insights in your life, and you have gone through certain growth processes and you have certain relationships and the other people in your soul family are doing certain things that require a little help over here, a little help over there. And so you kind of naturally dance with many, many factors 
of where you're going to go next with your life and how you're going to dance with your dance partners, both nature and other members of your soul family. And so that together we have a lot of experiences and we are able to always always learn about a little bit more, be a little more creative in how we express ourselves in, in tandem together. So I have been a part of the soul family I'm a part of as the forces of incarnation and de-incarnation of that soul family for, you know, uh, our soul family has been around for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. And so we have evolved, you might say, in our expression, this way and that way. Now, as, uh, as many of you know, we have, um, in recent centuries, uh, consented to hold space for a, an experiment in uh, the humans taking free will to a radical sense of separation, as if they um, are the important ones on this planet and anything non-human is game to control. And where this has led in this experiment is to the near destruction of many parallel worlds. And our soul family chose to participate in this, to hold space for this experiment, thinking, well, maybe we can learn something from this. Maybe this would be interesting. But we um, not only agreed, had an agreement with the rest of other soul families in mass consciousness in general, that um, we would uh, hold space for this for so long. And uh, if things neared uh, the end, you know, of <laughs> the ex if the experiment was about to blow up, we would uh, pull our own people out. This is the basis for um, the agreement on the part of mass consciousness that I, as the leapers, would be able to intervene in this whole uh, spread of how parallel lives come into being and fade out and how, you know, incarnate lives of who you think you are um, living a life, um, the births and deaths, how this would uh, play out. Um, uh, I, I have been developing powers that I really did not exercise as much, nearly as much, in past centuries, and millennia even. Because humans have not been pushing the limits of the relationship between humans and nature nearly so much. Before now, uh, there wasn't such an arrogant attitude on the parts of humans, who after all are in bodies, you know, you're, you're in bodies and you're dependent on nature and, and everything you see around you is um, created by nature. Maybe humans have kind of melted natural metals into certain uh, structures or uh, strange concoctions like latex paint you see around you or, you know, all sorts of things. But uh, it's all uh, essentially coming from natural materials, uh, plastics come from oil, that have their own consciousness. And if you're uh, uh, watching um, Kim Newman's uh, video series, um, he talks about the consciousness in, in even devices that humans have made. So this is the background of... Um, well, you know, part of why all nature beings now are coming to more of a sense of selfhood and more of a sense of the ability to intervene in human affairs um, is because the balance is so far off of what humans have meddled with 
and how humans have ignored our natural dance together, our natural relationship together, that has always, in the past, brought balance. Um, humans have chosen to ignore that. And so we, uh, it sparks a response on the part of nature beings um, to find the balance one way or another in working with humans. So I have become, especially in your generation, especially this year, especially this week, I think, um, much more proactive in people's lives. And um, across many of these parallel worlds, even, um, that I'm helping people traverse. Uh, Kathy lives close, to, uh, and Peter live close to a, a very powerful mountain um, within and uh, partly without Rocky Mountain National Park in Colorado in the U.S. It's a very special mountain with energies that uh, make it especially easy to access different parallel worlds that are located all on the same mountain. And Kathy has played with us. Uh, she has uh, met beings uh, from a number of layers of parallel worlds. So you can talk, you know, some of these are ancient civilizations, and some of them are concurrent in time, sharing the same space, but sharing a little bit different vibration, or having a, a little bit different vibration, not sharing the same vibration. And there are a multitude of parallel worlds just on long speak. Um, so I have a, a wonderful playground <laughs> to play with there in uh, helping uh, especially my soul family, but your soul family, even if it is not mine, does have its leapers. You have a le you have forces of incarnation and deincarnation in your soul family as well. And you can pretty much count on um, the idea that your leapers are coming to greater power too at this time. And uh, doing the same juggling act that we're doing in uh, trying to find a way uh, to make this experiment in extreme free will uh, bear some fruit and to also, um, out of this experience, uh, come to suggest and decide on the part of a bigger mass consciousness what experiments in archetypes around which new parallel worlds can coalesce will be chosen next as this experiment seems to be wrapping up. Which is very exciting. These transitions between archetypes, uh, you know, um, some people say this is the beginning of the Aquarian age. You know, there's a lot of different ways of looking at or the Mayan calendar coming to a close, why this is a transition time. It, you know, pick your culture, pick your symbolism. Um, but, but this is, in our view, quite obvious that... Uh, the human experiment going the way it's been going could not go much farther in the same direction and have anything um, not cremated, dissected, burned, <laughs> um, chopped up, uh, uh, what all are you doing, uh, even at the quantum level, you know, uh, Blasted! Oh, oh, I love the, the the Haldron Collider. What's it doing? It's colliding things. You know, I mean, that's just such a beautiful word for this experiment. Let's collide everything together. You know, so, you know, how much can you collide <laughs> and um, continue in a meaningful way? So, of course, we're at the end of an age. Not that it had to be that way, but it um, does seem to be that way. So, now... With that background, what we want to go into is talking about a relationship now. I mean, again, we are nature beings, having a relationship with you humans, and I'm really enjoying looking in, in the lens of this camera 
out at the many people that are watching this. Um, I mean, quite literally, across time. And I, uh, you know, it's fun to be down um, looking through Kathy's eyes in, in the kind of 3D space, 3D, 4D, whatever you call this, um, at you all, vibrating with you in this way. Um, through the framework, you know, I see the, the lens, and it has the lens, uh, I don't know what, the sides of the lens kind of stick out a little bit beyond the glass. And that's like a picture frame. Um, what we've done with coming up with the whole name Leapers and the whole idea of the leap is to frame a concept um, um, that has, you know, uh, the whole idea of incarnation, of course, has happened for eons. It's built into this universe as the way things happen, <laughs> the way things change. Incarnation, death is what you call the incarnation. Um, birth and death, change, transformation. And with the leap, calling it the leap, which again is a term we made we made up jointly one night as we were sitting around here <laughs> uh, with some, some people that Kathy was channeling for here in this very room. Um, no, let's, let's call them the leapers, okay? Um, it's framing who we are and who we have always been through a new lens. And like, like your camera is now in the age of the myth of scientific objectivity, and the myth of uh, separation, um, uh, just, just the whole arrogance of the idea that a human... Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll take a risk here. The whole ridiculousness, from my perspective, of the way at least people take that whole catchphrase, you create your own reality. Um, you know, this is part of the frame of scientific objectivity, that I exist separate from you and separate from my reality, and... I can create everything around me. And um, I, I know that, you know, we have great respect for some of the early um, proponents of this idea uh, who we think, uh, which, you know, of course, goes back thousands of years, but um, who we think... Uh, spelled that idea out, like, like, for instance, Jane Roberts in the Seth books, um, in a much more sophisticated way than most people um, interpret it and use it as a catch catchphrase. Because here we are saying um, we are the beings who take the direction that the soul family is going, and and as Kathy says in the great computer in the sky, uh, that's kind of us um, looking at the chessboard, uh, saying, "Okay, who do we need to create next in our soul family to help move our whole soul family in the direction we want to go next?" And it even within the individual soul, if you call it a soul. Um, we, we do the same chess work. Which parallel cells do we want to um, split off so that your particular life will go in the most rich and meaningful and fun even direction that you can go? We see meaningful and fun as being synonymous at times. Oh, we hope you do too. So from that perspective, um, you have um, your own individual, even on the level of a parallel self, um, ability to decide a great deal about your life in terms of particulars of what you do, where you go. But you are 
born um, to certain parents, um, um, you are, and, and you know, I mean, even if, even if there's a test tube involved, you're still born to certain parents. And you are born in a certain place, and you are have a certain um, genetic information in your energy field, a certain DNA. What well, DNA is such a limited term for what's there, because also within that is uh, what you would call a lineage of experience of your forebears who have passed that DNA down to you, um, and and um, also of what your descendants pass back up to you, and so forth. Um, I mean, that's just the beginning of your limitations. You were created. You are the created, as well as the creator of your experience. And although we think some people in the you create your own reality philosophy, which we know science is supporting in many ways, um, uh, although that is taken into account as an assumption by uh, some, some of the early best advocates, I, I'd say, of, of this philosophy, um, there are a, enough people that um, kind of lose, si uh, uh, lose sight of the fact that they are the created as well as the creator of their experience. And, and we think it's, it's very much um, uh, that this has happened is, is very much a reflection of the grand experiment in objectivity and separation that's happening on the mass scale, especially now. So I look at this camera lens, and it's got a frame around it. And all of what I've just mentioned is kind of the frame of the archetypes that we're dealing with in your culture. You create your own reality, objectivity, and so we are adding a frame around the frame of the idea of the leap. We are not contradicting that consciousness creates experience, that perception creates your world, and we even often go so far as to say relationship creates you. You are not separate from those you are relating to. And those, what we call devas of relationship, uh, spirits, uh, a deva is a nature spirit, a, a spirit of the relationship between you and another person, or even between you and a flower, or you and a hunk of metal, um, that is largely who you are, is a conglomeration of relationships, largely, not entirely, but largely for all practical purposes. And that is reflected even in your DNA because you are a conglomeration of your ancestors' experiences. And, um, you know, it's, it's this idea of, there's a pu of the, that there is a pure soul is uh, like a platonic idea, ideal. It's a, it's a rather interesting development as you distill things down into malleable forms. Um, like the, these walls uh, have gypsum in them, which is a mineral, but they've, it's been refined enough that you put it in your walls and you forget that this came from the earth in a certain location that has a certain consciousness. And the gypsum itself has a certain consciousness. You, you hide it behind this latex paint, forgetting that the latex paint, um, you know, came from somewhere, the ingredients, etc. Anyway, um, so our frame around the frame is kind of going to a meta level of looking at how things unfold in your life. So... Um, Actually, we want to use as an example uh, something that Kathy is, is uh, feeling keenly today. This morning, 
um, a friend, of, a dear friend of hers, who had decided to explore addiction and take it to uh, take the indulgence as far as he could. Um, took it as far as he could this morning. And this has been building over a matter of months, and there have been other people involved. And this morning, um, you know, we have been working with him. He's very aware of us. He has worked with us a great deal. Um, it was decided um, to let him fade out. Now, that's a funny word. Is That's a form of deincarnation that doesn't even involve the death of a body. This particular individual, like all of you, has split off many parallel selves. And we have been consciously working with, um, I mean, we're always consciously working, but his parallel self <clears throat> was consciously working with us and consciously working with him um, to try to balance what, what this man was doing. This is common in, in soul families, or even in, in one soul, um, you and your parallel selves. Often uh, what you will do in shooting off a parallel self is to explore a certain kind of experience that, you know, the, the um, um, if you look at it as a river, you have a main line of, of um, that you came from. Okay, if you can imagine that you, um, from your birth, have split off many tributaries of the main river you were born to be. And many of these tributaries then go out and explore certain kinds of experiences that help to make you, you, <laughs> oh, your your life expression in this in this lifetime with with this you know these parents, this location that you were born to, um, that life stream, this astrology chart. Um, You'll, you'll go out in all sorts of different directions, exploring, oh, well, what if I marry this person and not that person? Or what if I marry the other person and not this one? What if I have this career? What if uh, trauma happens to me at a certain age that I'm hoping will spur certain growth and um, exploration in um, trying to make sense of it? Uh, what if... Uh, great wealth comes to me? What if great poverty comes to me? Yeah, there's, there's different things you can experiment with to see who you are and, and how, how this particular soul is going to um, experience life, react to, to different um, occurrences, and, and uh, what desires this particular soul is going to want to pursue and and do in creating his own reality or her own reality. You know, I mean, um, oh, what <clears throat> what little affirmations will you do <laughs> because you want to go somewhere? Um, many, many infinite directions that you can go in. There are infinite directions, and sometimes um, one of your parallel selves will find themselves in under intense psychological or even physical stress from exploring something that's a bit risky or a bit intense, uh, it's, uh, extreme. And then you will, you know, that's the tributary you're on. You may then split off different parallel selves to help take certain tendencies off in a certain direction and explore them even more intensely and still have the main body of the parallel self um, be able to continue with less stress. 
And this is what happened um, to Kathy's friend. He was exploring a, a certain uh, very rich experiences and decided he wanted to experience utter self-indulgence <laughs> and um, was going that direction. And his community was saying, whoa, look at what you're doing. Um, a woman he was involved with was exploring it with him and was pulling him along to the extreme expression. And so we took it upon ourselves to help him split off another parallel self that would be free of the addiction, that would go a different direction, and that would move towards a more of a sense of health and uh, what we would consider to be, um, and what his, certainly what his community considered to be, um, a healthier, more, more intriguing expression of who he was. And we did various things we won't talk about uh, right now to shore up this parallel self split off. And he is he's really becoming quite a brilliant being, this parallel self. And he will have the rest of his life the uh, and all of the parallel selves of him will have the knowledge of what the addict explored. And this can, you know, it, it can bring a lot of wisdom. Uh, he uh, is a healer himself, or at least has been, and uh, will be able to help other addicts now, um, or former addicts. Uh, so it, it, in a way, it was a miracle that one day the addict was the addict, the next day, there was an addict here and a non-addict here that had come off the same shoot, the same, you know, plant stem had, had you know, gone in different blooms. And this morning, um, it seemed as though the addict had gone as far as he could um, in exploring uh, experience of life that was not rich, was not no longer meaningful. It was like uh, like he had become more a conglomeration of what we call non-soul entities of these personality fragments, the addictive personality, subpersonalities you could call it. He was more these addictive subpersonalities than he was a conscious being that can make choices that could create his own reality anymore. He was ruled by these uh, personality fragments. And in that sense, we would say he had become wispier. His reality was becoming so, uh, you know, like 2D, black and white, you might say, just kind of fading out if you look at it in terms of what's a meaningful existence. To just, you know, follow your desires, desires, indulgence, indulgence, and not even have much choice anymore. So we have been watching him fade out. And this morning the decision was made actually by his parallel self that it's time to let him go and let him totally dissolve. And... Uh, you know, we, we found it interesting to watch Kathy's reaction to this. Um, she was in on that conversation. And uh, he's a very, very dear friend of hers. And um, to watch, you know, the, the ease, actually, at which this parallel self of the addict made that decision and made the call um, uh, that he wasn't... Um, he didn't see any more meaning in that that lifetime that parallel self continuing, and uh, we uh, it made us realize, and, and this is part of why we wanted to do this video today, while it's kind of still fresh, um, that um, we could really see 
uh, you know, when you're down in incarnation, you humans <laughs> tend to think a death is a tragedy, often. And especially if an addict dies, um, it looks, uh, when you're down in it, we're sure, it looks like, oh, this situation came to a tragic, hopeless end. Instead of saying, wow, he really fulfilled his desire to experience something all the way. He took that desire as far as you could. Take it. And so, you know, there was some, some wisdom, some experience gained by his whole cluster of parallel selves, which is what we see you as, uh, you, uh, in, a, in a step up, you know, um, um, looking down on your lives. That's, uh, the soul. The soul has many parallel expressions, parallel life expressions. So for us to say, okay, um, we will dissolve the rest of him, which didn't take much because he already, um, again, was ghost-like in terms of meaning, in terms of meaning. You know, that wasn't hard for us, and um, it, it didn't require a dead body at all. And this is what we want to really talk about, the, the heart of. When we're talking about parallel worlds, I mean, we've said many times that ones that don't have meaning uh, just fade out. And that's something we have found, uh, one of the hardest concepts, we think, uh, the people we have been teaching. Uh, it's very hard to grasp fade out, what does that mean? Does that mean that um, if I'm on a, a parallel world where there's, um, that's not unlike his addiction, we think the hallmark of some of the worlds Kathy has lived on uh, a little bit earlier, uh, that she was on when we first uh, started coming through her. Uh, addiction is uh, such a common experience, and, and you could even say that the whole world, um, collective world, was so infiltrated with addiction that, you know, as people talk about the addiction for electricity, Electricity, even if we build nuclear power plants and cut tops off of mountains for coal to get the electricity we're addicted to it, we have to have it. Uh, there are so many, especially environmental disasters, that are coming from human addiction at this time. Um, even addiction for money that lets you look at another fellow human being and let them starve. Uh, this blows our mind. It blows our mind, collective mind, and we're a big mind, you know, um, that humans, first of all, go to war with each other, and second of all, will let each other starve uh, so that they can have more resources than another. And, and that will, of course, uh, even blows our mind that you will let your population get out of hand to where there's a shortage and overconsumption. You know all the things. Uh, this has got to be... The behavior of addiction of addicts. Um, that's or it's like just um, humans are morally hopeless, and, and we would rather see it as addiction, <laughs> whatever that is, uh, because then we look at it as kind of a systems um, uh, way of um, theory of. Is, are there certain ways you're raised in this culture? Is the archetype, are the archetypes creating addiction inherently and so forth? There's a lot of ways to look at it then. And therefore, different ways to work with it. Um, but this, you know, this uh, split between nature and humans seems to us to be um, very much at the core of, of this kind of behavior. So, so we would say, um, 
uh, you know, we're experimenting here with you to see if, if this metaphor of what happened with Kathy's friend this morning, uh, if that helps to clarify what happens with whole worlds. And that sometimes a world will decide to, to experiment. And the goal is not necessary lon- necessarily longevity or survival for that world. The goal is to explore something, to express something for the whole, to learn something for the whole. And when that purpose is spent, and um, it fades out, it fades out. Were we not meddling now in a way that we have not? meddled in past centuries and millennium. I mean, we have meddled uh, uh, only, <laughs> we only meddle with those that choose a relationship with us and want to live their lives from a much more conscious, global, cosmic perspective. That's who we work with. That's who we leap. That's who we do miracle healings with. That's who we say, you want to go to another whole parallel world, another whole culture that is, has an archetype of human nature love. Um, you know, okay, if, if you trust us enough and you love us and we love you, we'll do amazing things in, in uh, furthering your journey without you having to die and be reborn to go to another culture, another world. Uh, and, and sometimes these cultures that you end up in, it's not that different than going, getting on an airplane and going to another part of the world oh, with a vastly different culture. I mean, sometimes those are what we would call parallel worlds. They're worlds built, or, you know, culture built around different paradigms than the one you grew up in. Um, you know, long speak is not the only, <laughs> the only place where there's many parallel worlds. Oh in the same geographic location even. But a different geographic location can give you a much different culture as if you're in a different world. Parallel worlds is just, it's it's a handy phrase. We're looking for words, we're looking for vocabulary all the time. Um, But, you know, to let you know that we can get you out of the paradigms you're in, into a much uh, safer place, into a world uh, with paradigms that are not, have not, come to the end of their usefulness and are not fading out. So from our, from our viewpoint, the so-called apocalypse that everybody seems to be looking at and some people seem to be wanting, um, the apocalypse, if you call that the end of a civilization, is not necessarily when there's, you know, big bombs going off and and um, blood up to the horse's bridle level, as, as uh, to quote the Bible. Um, the real apocalypse of the end of the civilization may just be a fading out. It's kind of like if there's not enough interest and people all leave the movie theater, you know? It's like, well, who knows what the end of the story was? It wasn't interesting enough to watch. Um, that's what the leap is, is people leaving the movie, not just leaving the theater, but leaving the movie. The characters in the movie is saying, this isn't really that interesting. Uh, it seems like a plot that gets, you know, we've done over and over and over and over and different incarnations, different reincarnations, you know. Um, can we do something else, please? <laughs> you know, and so we're the director saying, well, we can cast you in a movie over here. Would you rather do that? And Okay, yeah, that sounds fantastic. Let's go. So it's your trust in this director that he'll put you in a better movie and can read you well enough to to uh, think, I think you'd be good in this movie over here, and you know they really could use your talent over here. Okay, can we send you over there? Um, this is the kind of relationship we are wanting to develop with millions of people on your parallel world. And again... Um, well, our pair, our soul family does have millions of people, um, you know, in in several, many parallel worlds actually. But um, you know, there are millions, and your soul family again 
has its own labors, who are coming to self-conscious, self-consciousness. You know, most nature beings just feel a part of the whole, and they, they have a sense of self when they need it. And then the, other t- in the rest of the time, they don't really think about it. And this is really how humans live, too. You just um, tend to forget that when you are sitting quietly and not thinking too much about it, your sense of selfhood isn't really strongly there either. Um, which is the idea of meditation. Part of the other part of why we want to help lead people to new parallel worlds is that we would like to think that whatever was learned through the experience of Kathy sitting here in front of a device designed by humans with materials taken from probably all around the world that who knows who is warring over, whether corporately or you know nationally, and uh, putting them together and sticking them in this room, pointing it at her, and me talking to you through it, through her, through it, and us pretending that that's the only way you can really um, communicate with me. Um, you know, what, was, there, was there something kind of interesting in this? Uh, I know I'm not the first one who's gotten in front of this camera and going, you know, like, oh, this is interesting. <laughs> you know, when she stand all daisy, I think it was like, oh, this is interesting. <laughs> you know, and, um, oh, what, a, what an idea. What an idea. It, it's like uh, most organisms that Kathy relates to, like uh, when she's in the woods, you know, she's run into coyotes and, and um, other animals that have eyes, and different kinds of cats. Um, and uh, you know how cats' eyes, like a bobcat, It'll, it'll, um, you know, catch the light in a kind of intense way. Actually, I think I can see our reflection in this lens. It's kind of amazing. Um, That's amazing. The light doesn't all bounce back here. Are you seeing us? (laughs) Or is it all reflected back? Anyway, I think you're in there somewhere. Um, Okay, so the the bobcat's eyes, you know... um, are, are intense to look at for her, but there's this furry body with fascinating muscles and, you know, furry little paws. Um, it's not just an eye. A bobcat is not just an eye. But when you look at this camera, it's like, yeah, there's a little tripod holding it up, but it's it's just an eye. <laughs> you know, it's like, um, who are you? <laughs> you know, do you have a life a part of just looking at me? And to be honest, um, it seems like there's more and more people who are on the internet day and night and have become like this tripod camera. Do you have a life outside of outside of looking uh, into a computer screen? Uh, it's the dilemma we um, are dealing with all the time that we would really much prefer to have you outside in a natural area and talk to you there telepathically than talk to you through this computer. But since that seems to be where everybody is, is sitting in front of their computers, um, we decided to look back at the eye here and uh, say hi. Hi. Um, anyway, I, I, I hope I'm not sounding too sarcastic, but it, it really is an intense experience to be in front of a camera. Um, uh, trying to find the words to help you get a sense of realities that involve 
nature in a huge cosmic sense of incarnation, deincarnation, something so much bigger than your devices ever came up with. Um, they, ref you know, there's a lot of metaphors of what the internet is, etc. But um, the, the hugeness of, of, for instance, what happened this morning, of a man um, fading out. I, I, um, I mean, there may be a technical. Um, metaphors for that, and scenes fading out in a movie or something. Um, but <clears throat> I, I think if you are sitting uh, in a room with another human being who is fading out, it's a pretty powerful experience. You know? And Kathy wasn't in the same room with him. Um, this was, but uh, it affected her greatly. It was a huge transition. Not partly because he won't be bothering her anymore. <laughs> but, um, uh, it, it, was, it was a death. Um, okay. So, uh, we are hoping that this movie that you are probably participating in, if you're watching us through this big eye. We're hoping to find tremendous meaning and having done something this extreme. Now this man that we're referring to has had a long life. He's about Kathy's age and um, has had many tributaries come off the main river of his life, and some have come back in and and brought their gifts back to uh, um, the mainstream of his life and and gone on. And, and you could look at it this way too, that he went off, had this addiction experience, and then now he's kind of merging back in to his other lives and will bring his knowledge of addiction to the whole parallel self that then is much richer. Maybe that's even a better metaphor than fading out is to bend back around and bring it back in. But his individual selfhood faded out. His life force, his wisdom, his experience, his experience was not lost. It comes back into the mainstream of the, of the soul. Um, uh, this this uh, metaphor for what whole worlds do, you know, he took he took addiction to the extreme. Many of the worlds of the people are on, that people are on that are able to access this video. Your worlds are like that addict going to the extreme to learn something that. Um, and your wisdom, your experience, um, your delight at your technology even. Um, and, and of course, I mean, technology has developed in many worlds, uh, much greater technology than you have that is not part of this addiction and this uh, ignoring the consequences of um, what you've done to the earth to get this, this technology. And, you know, trying to control the earth with this technology. There's, there are many parallel worlds that have explored what you would call technology probably, but not with that archetype of we are separate from the earth and can dominate it and each other with, this, with these devices. I mean, really, when you look at, you know, when you start to look at how many of your common inventions were invented by the military, um, computers, cell phones, you know, you, you name it, uh, who has the money? Who has the money for research and development? And, and when uh, these, this research has largely been done to learn how to kill people and how to control people and how to control the earth, you know, it's pretty clear what, where, what the, the archetypes are behind your devices, your technology, if you look at where the funding came from and for what purpose. Uh, so, so it, it, you know, there are technological parallel worlds that will continue that are not fading out. We want to be clear about that. It's, the, the problem is not technology, the problem which is a certain, um, uh, we suppose we would define that as a, 
using tools to extend the human mind. Um, but those tools, if you treat them as alive, uh, then it, it gets more interesting than what you've done. But anyway, um, so these... Uh, the technological worlds, even your delight in the technology and your excitement uh, as you've discovered how to do these things, um, you know, that excitement um, can, can come back to the main tributary of human experience. And um, then your, you know, little time space neck of the universe. Um, and, and, and a lot can be learned from having been through this. And just like that man's, uh, what he learned through the addiction, the self-indulgence, is going to go back and, and actually be rich learning for his soul. And his uh, whole stem of, uh, his whole, you know, uh, conglomeration of parallel selves. So there's really not a judgment in it. And there's really not a judgment in what you have done. And many, many of the people that we are leaping have been really deep in the thick of uh, military, technological, seemingly immoral <laughs> circumstances, uh, doing all sorts of things. And when, we, when they say they want to leap and come home and go to a different paradigm, we love them just as much as we love the um, organic farmers. Um, they are all soul family. They are all. They have all explored what could be explored at this time in this place with these archetypes, and uh, we see them all as beautiful. Now, some of them, if we're if we're leaping them to another parallel world, um, we certainly ask them uh, if they mind if we clean up a lot of their bad habits <laughs> uh, before we land them on another world uh, that's of a higher vibration it's almost needed you know it's almost part of the deal that you can't go to a higher vibrating parallel world if you're low vibrating without us helping to you raise your vibration which we do and, and it can be an intense process to drop a lot of um, really the survival mechanisms that allowed you to be in some of these horrible places or intriguing places, however you see these places, you know, however you experience them, um, you, you will have to drop some of the behaviors that probably kept you alive. Um, and if you're going to a, a parallel world where people actually get along and want to cooperate and so forth. So there, there's can be a very intense um, transformation. And, and many of the people that we have pulled out of some of these really intense situations um, or, or like intense situations of, of deprivation or so, you know, all sorts of situations. Um, most of them really welcome the transformation. They don't really want to have to hang on to the armor that they've put around themselves to be able to survive. Um, and they want to, you know, open their hearts. Uh, generally speaking, uh, you know, it is people who do have a conscience, who do have an open heart, even if they have to really um, dumb down on that part of themselves to survive, um, that want to leap, that are even interested in leaping. The, the people that want to be able to go to a world where it's safe to have an open heart, you know, that's a very common um, priority for a lot of these people. I want to experience a world that's safe, where I can open up and love people without, you know, wondering what's going to happen to me. Uh, so it, it's just a delight. Uh, uh, we love to get very involved in people's lives who want to make radical changes. And especially if they've been in a very interesting life circumstance that is rich in experience in its own way, uh, to take the wisdom of that, uh, leave them to another parallel world, where, uh, you know, some of the, you might say some of the purposes of the parallel worlds that we work with as destination parallel worlds is to harvest a lot of this wisdom of experience and um, 
this happens so so nicely um, when people are still alive and still able to think and feel and and reflect on their experience and instead of letting them all die and and then um, um, you know there's still a reflection after death but uh, these people can use what they've gained in their new parallel world and take the gifts of it and creatively um, bring uh, cultures together in, in uh, reinforcing the strengths of each other. Uh, we, we find it fascinating and, and we, love, we love helping people do this. Um, it, it, it's, it's amazing watching the strengths that have come from some of these worlds that are fading out. Um, you know, if, if these people continued in some of these difficult circumstances they've been in on the old world, their lives, you know, are, 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 it's just getting to be so that they don't feel much meaning in being a spy, you know, anymore, or, or um, being the manager of a corporation that uh, is... Uh, having to just compete and not really be able to even, um, you know, care about the, so the social, uh, the society, and uh, uh, because the competition is so driving uh, for profits and survival. Um, so, so people, uh, so we're saying, uh, it sounds ironic that they're bringing a rich experience out with them, but we say that the culture they were in is fading out for lack of meaning. Well, if they stayed with the culture, they would fall into the lack of meaning, and, and uh, there's, there's so much depression in these worlds. There's really so much depression and just apathy. But if you, if you get them out of that situation into another world, then they can look from a bigger framework on, wow, what did I learn from doing that? And, um, and then it becomes pretty interesting to look back on their lives and, and say, what can I contribute here, you know? Um, and how can I um, use what I experienced to help decide which archetypes are going to be the core center around which whole new parallel worlds of experience will be formed, will be created, will be expressed. So, you know, Kathy's uh, background was a uh, United Methodist minister very briefly. And uh, she's thinking, okay, Time for the altar call. <laughs> we don't mean to offend any any uh, Christians out there, but uh, it's like okay, um, um, we've had this time together talking to you, and we feel like we have a relationship with you, even through this eyeball, this technological eyeball. Um, we just want to tell you while we have a chance that we love you, each and everyone watching this. We love you. And there are opportunities for explorations in consciousness, if you want to call it that, like you've probably never seen before in your many lives, if you've had many lives. You know, uh, there's a stereotype that uh, really so-called spiritual people, you know, have been a part of the mystery schools, have been, you know, in the pyramids, and are very advanced. Um, and uh, we see the spiritual warriors, the real, a lot of the real advanced, what we would call advanced, are... People are the ones who who um, agreed to come down and, and um, incarnate and get. We don't like to say come down, that incarnate and get themselves in a real pickle and find the strength, the strength of consciousness, to say, 
I want to uh, to leap. I want to leap. And if that's you, if that's you, all you have to do is say yes. That's all you have to do. You don't have to. I mean, it helps if you want to read our books and, and watch our videos. <laughs> you know, it helps to know what you're getting into. But it, it is just so simple. It is so simple. A and that is a mark of how much your soul family loves you. That uh, it all wants you to be happy and to have opportunities. Uh, to not have to fade out with uh, whatever world you may be on. And, and we, we do want to say that there may be many people watching this video who are on parallel worlds uh, that are actually improving actually uh, exploring archetypes of um, that are moving in a positive direction that are becoming more meaningful more rich more you know uh, that are not fading out uh, so but it's good for you to know about the ones that are know what you you can feel good about yourselves that you you have managed to create your own reality onto a good parallel uh, um a meaningful parallel. I mean, we shouldn't even use the word good, but uh, one that will last longer and has some some rich exploration right there without leaving home, without leaping to a whole other culture. So we hate to end this. Uh, we're probably just babbling here because we just want to look you in the eye a little bit longer. Um, you know, it, it's not even so much... Um, uh, wanting you to say yes, it's, are you going to let us look you in the eye? Are you going to let something bigger than you, bigger than the human, um, look you in the eye and uh, touch, touch your heart, touch your soul? Blessings to all of you who have played your part so fully for all of us. We love you dearly.